What's up? The most important mutation that triggers essential thrombocytemia is mutation in JAK2 kinase that markedly increases proliferation rate of myeloid cells. Recall that on chromosome 9 located JAK2 gene that encodes JAK2 kinase. The function of JAK2 kinase is to activate cellular pathways that are responsible for cellular proliferation, especially of myeloid cells. And activation of pathways occurs by phosphorylation. By activation of JAK-STAT pathway, JAK2 kinase stimulates mostly red blood cells production. By activation of PI3K AKT pathway, it stimulates production of megakaryocytes from which platelets are formed. By activation of RAS pathway, it stimulates production of granulocytes and monocytes. And in normal condition, JAK2 kinase is active only when it receives signal by cytokines. Kidneys produce erythropoietin that stimulates red blood cells production. Liver produce thrombopoietin that stimulates production of megakaryocytes from which platelets are formed. And bone marrow microenvironment by secretion of granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factor cause increase in production of granulocytes and monocytes. But if mutation cause substitution of valine on phenylalanine in 617 position of JAK2 kinase, now JAK2 kinase becomes constantly activated. So this regulation by cytokines is gone. And this mutation cause disproportional activation of intracellular pathways that results in mild increase in granulocytes and monocytes, moderate increase in platelets, and severe increase in red blood cells. But in addition to JAK2 kinase mutation, in essential thrombocytemia and other mutations are present. So these mutations modify JAK2 kinase. It can be called reticulin mutation or MPL mutation. Both these mutations modify JAK2 kinase and this shifts entire production capacity of JAK2 kinase from red blood cells to production of megakaryocytes. So, as a result, the amount of megakaryocytes inside the bone marrow greatly increases. And because from megakaryocytes platelets produced, it causes significant increase in amount of platelets in peripheral blood. And the presence of more than 450 platelets in peripheral blood, hyperplasia of megakaryocytes inside the bone marrow, and the presence of JAK2 kinase mutation in combination with colorectal mutation or MPL mutation are the major criteria of essential thrombocytemia. God, give me a break. Seriously, I could just eat like a whole bowl of nougat, like oh. straight up. Oh. 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 Holy shit, you should have seen the look on your faces. Now, how such severe increase in platelets can manifest? With increasing amount of platelets, the risk of thrombosis significantly increases. Thrombosis can affect cerebral circulation, initial formation of microthrombi in cerebral circulation can cause symptoms as headache and lightheadedness, and with time severe thrombosis can result in a stroke. Also it can affect myocardial circulation, initially angina develops, and prolonged thrombosis can result in myocardial infarction. Also, it can affect intestinal circulation, where it can cause mesenteric ischemia. But the most signature feature of severe thrombocytemia is microvessel thrombosis that can cause erythromyalgia. Erythromyalgia is a burning, painful sensation in hands or feet with worms of the extremities and erythema of the fingers. It actually looks close to this. To explain this briefly, there is arterial vessel, and blood vessels have nociceptive receptors. One of such receptors is a voltage-gated sodium channel. And usually, if endothelial injury occurs, platelets come to the site of injury, then adhesion and aggregation occurs, and all this results in formation of a small platelet plug, from which secondary hemostasis makes thrombus. But in polycythemia, or essential thrombocytosis, platelet count become extremely high. And generally, the higher the platelet count, the more active become primary hemostasis. So now, in response to endothelial injury, because the amount of platelets become higher, platelets will form significantly bigger platelet plug, from which a secondary hemostasis will form a much bigger thrombus. 
The major problem is that a bigger thrombus will cause obstruction of the blood vessel, and obstruction will cause decrease in blood flow through this region. Because recall that with decrease in radius, resistance increase, and with increase in resistance, blood flow decrease. As a result, fluid begins to accumulate proximal to the obstruction. Increase in fluid volume will cause over-distension of the vessel wall, and the distension of the vessel wall stimulates nociceptive receptors. Nociceptive receptors send this signal as electric stimulus, and their significant stimulation will cause electric stimulus that will reach a threshold of excitation, and this will provoke an action potential and depolarization of nociceptive receptors triggers pain. Pain will provoke vasodilation, so blood will inflow to the affected region, so the higher will be the volume of arterial blood, and this will cause arrhythmia and worms. Also because blood flow to peripheral regions becomes disrupted, this will cause ischemia of peripheral tissues. First of all, ischemia will cause pain, and in severe cases, prolonged ischemia can cause formation of distal ulcers. Oh my God. Mutations in essential thrombocytemia provoke progressive increase in platelets production. And the problem is that severe increase in platelets production force bone marrow to produce broken platelets. Because actually, when you significantly increase the quantity of production, at some point it will affect the quality. Oh, I'm thinking about it. <laughs> Recall that first of all, to provide functions, platelets require surface receptors, SGP1B and GP2B3A, and COX enzyme inside them. Without them, aggregation becomes impossible. And when bone marrow produces such great amount of platelets in a hurry, sometimes platelets are produced without these essential components. And without any of them, they are incapable to provide effective primary hemostasis. And disrupted primary hemostasis increase the risk of bleeding. Now, another reason is that with increasing amount of platelets, the amount of von Willebrin factor in the blood decrease. Alright, you like this. Because recall from hemostasis that when endothelial injury occurs and subendothelial collagen becomes exposed, the first molecule that binds to the site of injury is von Willebrand factor. And only when von Willebrand factor binds to subendothelial collagen, platelets can bind to the site of injury. Because when platelets come to the site of injury, they cannot bind to subendothelial collagen directly. The way to do this is that platelets by GP1B receptor on their surface have to bind to von Willebrand factor, and by this they can be fixated to the site of injury. With binding, platelets become activated and this step called adhesion. And the concept is that the higher become platelet count, the higher becomes the chance that platelets will bind to von Willebrand factor in the circulation. And if this happens, then the amount of free von Willebrand factor in the circulation will decrease. So increase in platelet count at some point cause decrease in amount of free von Willebrand factor. And if endothelial injury occurs with very high platelet count, there is a possibility that there will be no free von Willebrand factor to bind to the site of injury. And without von Willebrand factor, adhesion becomes impossible. And disruption of adhesion causes disruption of entire primary hemostasis. Such deficiency of von Willebrand factor called inherited von Willebrand syndrome. Look, look, look. Voila. <laughs> cool, right? No? Okay, but um, so we... So production of a broken platelets and decrease in von Willebrand factor both cause disruption of primary hemostasis. Recall that disruption of primary hemostasis manifests this prolongation of the bleeding time. So in routine life, after cuts for example, bleeding lasts longer than normal. The major feature is mucous membrane bleeding. It's bleeding from GI tract, bleeding during menstruation, in addition to this, they have bleeding gums and nose bleeding, so-called epistaxis. Also, disruption of primary hemostasis causes microhemorrhages that on skin manifest this petechia purpura chemosis. So, the more severe becomes essential thrombocytemia, the higher becomes the platelet's production. So, the more platelets are produced broken, so the higher is the risk of bleeding. In addition to this, with increasing platelet count, Splenic platelet pooling increase, 
as a result splenomegaly develops. That's very interesting. The concept here is that spleen store approximately 20% of total platelet count, and in pathology as essential thrombocytemia, with increase in total platelet count, more platelets will be accumulated in the spleen. It's called increase in splenic platelet pooling. And logically, the more cells you have to store, the bigger has to become the storage site. Spleen simply requires more space to store additional cells. So, increase in total platelet count will make spleen bigger, and enlargement of the spleen called splenomegaly. Great. Fine. Yep. Ciao! What's that mean? Ciao. It's Italian. It means food. 